Welcome back, folks, to the WP Tonic Roundtable Show. This is episode 523. Got a small panel, but a powerful panel. Uh, I've got some great stories. It should be a great show. I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Vito has been roaming Greece and looks very relaxed. Uh, Vito, would you like to quickly introduce yourself? Sure. So I'm Vito. I'm the founder and CEO of WP Feedback, which is a platform that allows uh, for WordPress project delivery, uh, reducing between 50 to 70% of clients' project delivery uh, time. And I've got my friend John Locke. John, would you like to introduce yourself? My name's John. I do SEO for manufacturing and industrial firms. And I've got young Stephen with me. Stephen, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, Stephen from zipfish.io. We make WordPress really fast by not just sticking it on fast servers, but also optimizing the code. Right. And uh, before we go into the main stories of the week, I just want to mention one of our great sponsors, and that's Kinsta Hosting. Kinsta Hosting only supports WordPress websites. If you're building a site for a client, like a WooCommerce site or a learning management system, like I say, for your client or you're doing it for yourself, and you will need better hosting than the average hosting. And that's what you get with Kinsta. Um, built on Google Cloud with all the bells and whistles, PHP, um, the latest versions, you name it, they provide it with a great interface. Also great support. You can't really ask for more. I've been with them for a couple of years. I've been totally happy with them and they just do the business. So if that sounds interesting, and it should, go over to kinsta.com, buy a plan for yourself or for your clients, and the main thing is tell them that you heard about them on the WP Tonic Show. So let's go into one of the main stories. Um, I found Gutenberg versus Animator, HTMA bloat. What did you think of this one, John? I would really be interested in seeing... Um you know, what the actual loading speed was. But this was like really interesting. And uh, for this experiment, they did Elementor versus uh, Gutenberg using co-blocks. And they basically created this long landing page uh, identically in both. And what they came up with was Guten or Gutenberg has significantly less lines of HTML uh, way less divs. Uh, so for people who, uh, you know, worry about clean code, that's definitely the winner. But like I said, I would definitely love to, to see how fast each one of these rendered in the browser as, as far as like how fast each one of them loaded in, in the same hosting. All right. Sounds good to me. What do you reckon, Stephen? I think uh, bloated code is something that is always a struggle whenever you use some sort of page builder, like even Gutenberg, like take Gutenberg and compare it to like somebody that coded it up by hand using HTML and CSS and JavaScript and doing everything themselves. Like that's going to be way better. Um, where Elementor really, uh, why it has like some bloated code is because they have to deal with a lot of edge cases where blocks are a lot more modular and the way that it handles the HTML code and sticks it inside of the database um, just kind of lends itself to being a little bit more efficient, right? Like you don't have this kind of crazy editor that has to handle things. You don't have the number of um, features either that Elementor has, like the number of extra things that people add onto Elementor at increases everything a lot. Um, Elementor could do a little bit better job. And I think um, in version three, they've been talking a little bit about reducing a lot of their bloat. Um, if you compare them though, Elementor to other page builders, let's say not uh, Gutenberg, they're kind of somewhere in the middle. Divi is quite a bit worse. If you look at the amount of HTML elements that they use to generate their pages. Um, or, but then if you go to um, like Oxygen, I believe is really efficient, really stripped down. Um, version of the page builder. So it's at the, at the end of the day, HTML is not going to be the thing that slows down your site as much as what are you doing from a JavaScript perspective and what are you doing from a CSS perspective? Um, I bet if you would optimize a Gutenberg site and optimize an Elementor site, that Gutenberg site will be a little bit faster. 
but it won't be substantially faster. Like the end user, it's the end user themselves will not be able to know the difference if the site's been properly ed optimized. Straight out of the box without optimizing, I think Gutenberg would blow it away. But um, you spend a little bit of time optimizing the site and you can dramatically reduce the load, the load time to, you know, yeah, more user can become interactive with the website. I, I expect, expect, um, it's similar to kind of plugins. You can you can say, well, don't install any plugins. You know, just install free plugins, and do everything by you know, get somebody or you do it. Everything else you're looking for, hang. But that that's defeating the point of having WordPress because that was the whole point of it becoming popular. Was the plugin was one of the key factors for it becoming so popular was plugins. But on the other hand, you don't want to install a hundred of them, do you? You know, you just got to find a, a happy medium. And I suppose that's the same way with the page builders. I think that's one of the points you're trying to make, Stephen, is it will make a difference, but it, it, it's only a mind, it's the same argument with the plugin. What did you think, Vito? Um, first of all, it's uh, it's important to not to notice that this article was written from a Gutenberg kind of enthusiast point of view. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, so it's obviously taking taking their side in the in this uh, debate. Um, I would I would agree with you, Jonathan, that it's a matter of functionality. You're losing so much functionality by going down the Gutenberg route as of now, and I do believe it's going to continue this way. Uh, first of all, because Elementor has uh, uh, has more um, uh, years on Gutenberg, but also because they are a commercial company, so they will push things further faster a lot faster uh, than what Gutenberg will be able to do. And um, it is, uh, you know, I, I, so far when it comes to using it, I, I, I understand the point of the uh, HTML bloat. I agree with Steven, it's not gonna be such a big deal. Um, you know, the point of using page builders is to systemize the work, is to make sure that, you know, as you're building something, you're just getting it done as fast as possible because most websites and most customers doesn't really matter if there's five or 50 or even 100 more divs on their page, uh, you know, for, the, for that use case. Um, if you're gonna build like an application or its own, probably even better to not use Gutenberg or Elemental at all and just build the whole thing uh, uh, yourself. And so, um, yeah, it's kind of a moot point, you know. Uh, Elementor are doing a lot to, uh, to improve their uh, HTML structure just because it became a thing you know, people are just kind of starting to nitpick into this. Maybe not. Steven, uh, Steven is on the optimization side and John is on the SEO side. Uh, both can, can apply from that angle. I'm talking from the agency owner point of view. Just build it and get it over with and move on to the next project, you know. Um, I expect a lot more of these type of articles. I expect in the coming months a whole whole wall of these type of articles, a whole propaganda um pitch against Elemator from the, from the supporters Elemator and and come, a lot of them come from automatic I, I just expect it um, but I think you know but the thing is without a page builder in the modern you know the type of money you can charge now you know with the expectation that it's going to be device friendly on all device, all the devices, it's going to be friendly on mobile. It's going to be friendly on tablet. Plus, the um, potential clients are influenced by the latest designs. You know, that's one of the drivers about either having a new website or having an existing website refreshed. Is it's looking dated and it's not that mobile friendly to build something around the 5,000 mark, um, you know, to do all the testing without using a page builder, it's going to be a bit hard to do, to be quite truthful. If you're building it from the scratch up, um, you know, to do all the testing, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I think all these things are linked, really. So on to the next story. Um, I, I thought, I thought this... Just one more thought quick. I think what's interesting about the article too is like if you look at the 
size comparison, right? Like at the end of the day, a lot of times it comes down to like, what's the page weight? So like Elementor has like 99 kilobytes, Gutenberg, they said had 28 kilobytes, but like one slightly small image, like completely changes that. Like there are a lot larger fish to fry when you're thinking about how to optimize your page speed. And I would be surprised if you would see like a point one second difference between the Gutenberg and the Elementor, like if they're both optimized, like at the end of the day, that's gonna be the difference. And a point one second that, like difference probably doesn't translate to very many, uh, like your metrics changing very much from a traffic level, like your conversions will probably still be the same. Um, and when you have to deal with images or there's a thousand other things that impact that code exponentially more, like you're kind of straining at the gnats and forgetting about, you know, the big horse fly out there. Kind of trying to find those uh, positive points to uh, to keep the project uh, going, which I get, I get it, you know, from a marketing point of view, but it's just, you know, blowing smoke uh, around, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Nah, I think you're probably right. On to the story. And I found a story, a non-WordPress story that didn't really mention Facebook. So I'm really happy because I was getting a bit bored with Facebook. Wikipedia Award, the... Uh, that shows how ugly the election will be. Don't worry, we're not going to get too political here, but I thought it was an interesting story. What did you think, Stephen, about this one and the dark side of Wikipedia? I think this is what makes Wikipedia such a lovely place that like, the community, the world at large, gets to decide what the truth is. Um, it's not you know, controlled by a company or somebody with an agenda it's controlled by everybody with an agenda and whoever has the highest ranking on wikipedia um and so so like to say that there is no agenda behind wikipedia is wrong because it's millions of people we all have our thing but it's kind of uh democratized a lot um and i think it's i think it's a really good point that like when things happen in the world that changes what history is going to say about it Wikipedia has to figure out how it's going to represent that. And it's done that and it does that through the discussion board. And maybe it feels contentious for like what well, people are saying crazy things, but like this is what people believe, this is what people think, and this is what has to get hashed out. Um, and it just shows the beauty, I think, of Wikipedia versus like a, a newspaper or an encyclopedia where there's a company behind it and you don't know how the decisions were made. Like you can go and read through the feed and see exactly how they decided to say what they decided to on the Wikipedia page. And I think that's kind of cool. What do you reckon, Vito? The dark side. I agree with uh, Stephen. Um, it's, there, is no, there is no reality or truth, you know, in this world. Uh, it's just a matter of opinion. Well, you're sounding opinion. like our president there. For God's sake, Vito. I know you're, you're chilled out from your Greek trip, but... <laughs> <laughs> there must be some fundamental truths, aren't there? I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, you know, in that, I, I don't, you know, my truth is that I don't agree with him, but uh, in, in the vast majority of cases, as much as I follow, which is not a lot, uh, but, uh, but that's just how things are. Everything that you think is true, you can adapt a completely different opinion around it. Uh, so it's just a matter of opinions. This is what this round table is all about. You know, we're all bringing our agenda, our experience and, and, and saying something. Just take the last article as the example, you know, the guy that wrote it really believes that what he's saying is fully valid. You know, we don't hmm. see it in that same position, but I'm sure that there's a lot of people that do. Uh, so all we can do is just uh, follow our own truths and, um, you know, try to be as, as, uh, as open as possible because realizing that what we believe is probably not the only way or most likely not the right way even. Yeah, I don't quite agree with you there. I think there are some fundamental, you know, scientific and, you know, there's facts, facts, you know, can't be. But what do you reckon? Facts change, you know, that's the weird thing. Facts oh, change. You sound like Trump if you die. Uh, what, uh, <laughs> John, what do you reckon, John? Yeah, um, really interesting. Um, the propaganda, obviously, is not just limited to social media or mass media. I mean, it's um, any, any place where it can uh, be affected, so including Wikipedia. I, I'm just looking at some of these things that people are trying to push, and uh, it definitely has an agenda. Um, yeah, definitely uh, in a... In a 
outside of Wikipedia. I mean, definitely um, America is, is not really well equipped to handle uh, this type of information warfare. This is like the Cold War, but using the internet. Um, <laughs> that's being shown. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to speak for Spencer since he's not here today. Uh, did you know that Otto <laughs> is also a Wikipedia editor? I bet you didn't know that. I did, but I'm not surprised. I would imagine that yeah, keep the streak his alive. character traits perfectly to be a, a Wikipedia editor. But, but like Stephen said, it's the, the democratization of this stuff to where it can't just, you know, the, the, the edge lords and the, and the meme lords from 8chan and Reddit and, uh, you know, these subversive uh, forums can't just, you know, take over Wikipedia and, and write these, you know, um, the propaganda is facts. You know, it's, it's, it has to kind of stay in the lane of, of like, these are, you know, true things. And, and we're not just going to write propaganda here because somebody will, will go back and, and edit it and say, you know, that's, yeah. that's not think, true. I think I'm only assuming this. I'm, I'm making an educated guess here. And in some ways it's appalling, but I think in the modern world of um, journalism online and even traditional, I think when there's so much pressure, the news is moving at such a pace, people go to Wikipedia to do some basic fact checking on when somebody's saying something or they made a statement. And obviously, you know, I love Wikipedia. I've used it for years and I think it's a great resource, but I wouldn't say that I would rely on it in a public forum. But I think, I think a lot of these people are on so much pressure to get stuff out and they don't have the staff that they used to. Um, so they just use Wikipedia and that's why I think there's so much emphasis on about trying to manipulate it because it's a bit like Twitter. You know, Twitter has a big audience, but compared to Facebook, it's minor, but it's the type of people that Twitter, it attracts um, media influencers, you know, in, in reporting, in the social medium. And so that's why people attempt to manipulate Twitter. And that's why, what do you reckon, John? Do you think I'm on the right track there? No, I think you're onto something there. And, and definitely with, um, well, newspapers have been just completely decimated as far as um, staffing. Yeah, because they haven't been able to, ever since the internet, they've really not been able to figure out a model that works uh, as far as like monetization. Um, but as far as, you know, TV news, even, you know, you'll often see, I see it like, you know, whenever I turn on TV news, which is not often, but uh, you'll always see on the local news, there's at least like one segment where uh, per day where they're mentioning, you know, something that was tweeted by, you know, some famous person or a politician or something like that. So yeah, there's definitely, um, you know, a big push to manipulate anything that is in the social media because it becomes what people think and it becomes what people believe. Cause you know, they just, there's, there's only so many sources of, of truth and social media is like high on that list. Yeah. All right. On to story three, um, WP Reek starter theme, um, project um, looking for new maintainers. What did you reckon about this one, Vito? Um, I think that it's a, that it's a very very good project to um, uh, to kind of maintain. Um, I was aware of this one, you know, when it first started, but I haven't seen much of it or heard much of it when uh, as it was kind of a, a, you know evolving there. Um, but again, we're moving towards the place, and we talked about this on this show, that we're moving towards a place where uh, themes play a very s small role in the actual build, uh, more and more, especially for professionals, you know, fine for, you know, for um, uh, small businesses and uh, solopreneurs that want to have like a, a, some kind of a, a theme that is fully stylized and, and stuff like that. But this is not the case. The case here is to actually build something like that. And, you know, the, the more projects we're doing, the less we care about what theme we're going to be running. We don't use any of the functionality of the themes uh, 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 per se, you know, for most projects. Uh, so um, 
maybe it's not um, something that people should invest time into rather than probably better to just look for the next thing that will uh, help push this forward rather than just another open source thing. So what do you reckon, John? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, it's really sad. First off, it's really, really sad that, that Morton is no longer, you know, uh, really an active part of the WordPress community. And, and um, I know that where I place the blame for that, and it's not with Morton, but uh, is, is definitely a big loss to the community as a whole. But, um, you know, WP Rig, really um, a great project meant to be a kind of for this, um, this phase of, of WordPress, what underscores was uh, for, for the previous phase, uh, the beginning theme where you can use modern tools to build a theme. But like Vito said, you know, ultimately it is going to the entire WordPress project is going to move toward being block based. I mean, entirely it's, it's well on its way. Um, but I do hope that this finds a home and, and somebody maintains this. Cause I, I think it's a good example of, of web development. Yeah. I do. What do you reckon, Stephen? I don't have really any um, strong opinions about this piece. I, I actually wasn't really familiar with the starter theme. I've been kind of outside of the theme development world for, quite a long time and haven't really actually been in that too much, been a lot more into the plugin side of things. Um, but I think, I think when you have a quality theme that is looking for new maintainers, it's always kind of a scary place because you never know what's going to happen. And it's always sad to see good work get lost because there's nobody willing to take up the mantle. Um, so I hope they find somebody and I hope they get, you know, a good team of people or at least one person behind it and keep it going because from what I read in the article it seems like a great project and it seems like it's um, far and above a lot of other starter themes out there from just my quick overview. Yeah, I understand why Morton g gave up on this really but I also agree with Vito. Um, I think on the professionals which this is aimed at the professional WordPress theme builder developer um, I think the days um, most of them have their own their own starter theme, their own initial framework. Um, I, do, I just don't see this as being as relevant as it as it was. But um, I'm speaking from somebody that doesn't build themes, so I might be talking totally out my back of my. But uh, to be honest, I don't see why you would build a theme now to go out and start a theme business. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't see any any real use case for it at this point. I don't see I anybody starting theme businesses. Oh, I'm sorry. But that's why all these theme companies are selling. Can I just say, I, I, I think it's actually, I think it's a very confused market space because you've got that, I forgot its name. It begins with a K, um, which um, Adam from WP Crafter has been that's mentioning. Right quite a few times recently um and oh, it, it was a it's a free theme but they're bringing out a commercial version and it also works with lifter and learn dash and it's been getting a, a tremendous amount of traction and let's look at astra you know astra reached a million so i think um i think i think it's the middle that's getting hollowed out a bit and i think you find that with a lot of mature markets that mature it tends to be the middle so you've got the people like what Vito mentioned that are small business owners or they're non-techie they do it they they're people that think they can build this themselves um well they look for a theme and then you got the upper market, well, they get a full custom design done, you know, either using the Elevator or using um, um, Gutenberg or whatever page builder they want to use. You know, um, don't forget Beaver Builder out the conversation. Great guys. Um, but it's the middle. I think it was that middle sector that might be, might be being hollowed out a bit. Which in some ways was dominated by Theme Forest, even though we, you know, we hated it, you know, because it was such a, 
you know, WordPress in general is a bit of a wild west, but when it came to theme forest, you know, it made it made the wild west look tame, didn't it? You know, so um, you never really knew what you were getting, you know. And let's face it, some of the most popular themes on theme forest were some of the most horrendous themes that you had to deal with. Um, I will so, never get the Avada trend, you know, it yeah, lasted a couple is, of years, I never get it. No, no, but let's face it, they sold enough of it, didn't they? They, yeah, so... so I, this, I, well, I think the one, the one interesting thing about themes and why, to me, I wonder if they still have a place is because you can only have one theme installed on your WordPress site. You can have tons of plugins. So, like, in the back of people's heads or even in like an organizational structure, there's something to be said for having like this one thing that does the most for controlling and styling a site. Like everybody knows that that's the theme, but if you have plugins installed, like every plugin does like a thousand different things. And although like the, what's the difference between a theme and a plugin, like it's less and less every, every year. Uh, but I think there's still something that is interesting about that organizational hierarchy where you can have one thing, and a hundred different plugins and why to me there still feels like there could be a place for those themes to be i think they need to figure that out because things are changing so rapidly but that's just an interesting yeah. thing that i was thinking yeah, I, th I think all this is still up in the air and how it's all gonna uh, sort out i think it's gonna be obviously clearer in the next year um that's my opinion but i, I think it's still and i do understand obviously by the amount of commercial theme um, companies that have been selling or merging, it's got a tougher, and I, I think, and it's only my opinion, it's what linked to what I've just said, that the middle of the market, it's been hollowed out a little bit. Um, oh, we're going to go for our break. We've got some other great stories. We'll be back in a few moments. John is under attack over there. What's going on? <laughs> the dog's out or whatever. The dog's Ooh. still running around. And um, we're coming back. The dogs have been unleashed. Um, the chickens are running around. Uh, um, Vito doesn't care because he's still in Greece. Stephen, uh, <laughs> he's still sunny. He's come back to England. That must be that must be a bit of a shock. Oh, oh well. yeah, you know we landed. That was the craziest thing I've never seen. It. You know how when you uh, when you land, uh, you go through the clouds, right? And you pass the clouds, and then you land. The cloud never stopped. We just landed, uh, you know, out of nowhere. We were literally inside the cloud and hit the ground. It was crazy. And it never stopped raining since for the entire week. It's still the land of Jerusalem. There we go. Uh, as Blake would say. Uh, um, <laughs> on to, um, on to um, my next um, sponsor. And this is a real friend of the show. It's WP Fusion. Great team. Um, great chief developer, Jake. Um, it's a great product. If you're looking to link your um, WordPress website for yourself or for a client with their CRM, or I mean, it's something like Active Campaign or Drip, there's a load of them, and they actually support over 200 different CRM kind of systems, which is mind blowing as it as it is. And you want to do a modern membership site, a modern e-commerce environment, a modern learning management system set up you've got to be looking at using tags and this is the power of wp fusion it's a totally different different way of building membership learning mem membership systems and as soon as you get your head around it and you see the power of using it with wp fusion and tagging and then marketing optimization with its ability to communicate with something like active campaign your builds will be in a totally different space and you never go back to the old way of doing it it takes a bit of a jump but you can never go back to the old way of doing things so go over to wp fusion have a look at what they've got to offer and i suggest they offer a really great free product which you can try out and then buy one of their pro versions and tell them if you do that you heard about them on the WP Tonic Show because we are a great supporter of WP Fusion. So on to the next story. 
on to the next story, which would be great if it was I had it ready. And this was a shock. This really shocked me. I thought they had tons of money. <clears throat> and uh, it's Mozilla cuts 250 jobs. Says Firefox development will be affected. What do you reckon about this one, Stephen? Oh man, uh, Firefox. That's like a whole the whole thing. Um, Firefox, I feel like had its heyday, but over the last five years, the amount of people that I know using Firefox has been dropping significantly. And um, they Firefox released their developer version, which is really good, but more developers than not, I feel like are using Chrome. The adoption of Chrome, I think, in just this is very anecdotal. I don't, I didn't Google any of this. It feels like it just keeps going up. Um, Firefox tried to like branch into some other markets and they kind of seem to fail at that. And so really all they still have is their browser and you have to be able to pay for people somehow. And when the big guys are building their own browsers and their Firefox's market share is getting less and less, there's less and less room. I think Firefox is still really cool. I love what they're doing. I love what they're behind and what they're for, but when you live in a capitalistic world, if you can't get the money, you got to let people go, which is a shame. I think you put it out really so well, really, Stephen. And I'm a Firefox. I've stuck with them, even though some of their updates have been a little bit painful. I've stuck with them. But that was a great synopsis, really. Thanks for that, Stephen. Um, what do you reckon, Vito? Shock horror. I, I, I thought I, I need a drink. How many of us use Firefox? Do John, do you use, use Firefox? I, so it used to be my, my go-to browser um, like four or four, five years ago, and I moved to Chrome. And yeah, uh, inter inter interestingly enough, this week I got sick of Chrome and I'm not going back. I actually removed it from my toolbar here, and I'm using Edge, which is super awesome. Really? The new Edge, yeah, the new one. Uh, it, it took all of the, you know, all the Chrome extensions, only that it never crashes. And my Chrome, my Chrome was crashing like every day, a few times a day, which was just super annoying. Uh, so yeah, so I'm, I'm now, uh, a, 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 out of nowhere, I'm a, I'm a Microsoft enthusiast uh, uh, when it comes to browsers. I forgive you. You're a great guy, <laughs> great support of this show. So I forgive you. I don't know, you but you should check out Edge. It's basically Chrome without the bugs. And that's what I'm seeing. <laughs> without the bugs. <laughs> what do you unless I'm doing Unless I'm doing development stuff, I still have people like having weird issues in Edge that like don't appear in Safari, Chrome, or Firefox. And I'm just like, oh, well, this background video isn't playing, right? And it's just, oh. Right. And which is out. actually like um, an interesting point because now that I'm using Hill, I did find a few bugs specifically in our product uh, that no one was aware because no one was using Edge, you know, so like small, small things. Uh, so it's actually a good experience uh, from that <laughs> side as well. <laughs> so Home is John, sorted already. <laughs> so John, uh, I think Stephen made some points. I think they invested a lot of money into um, sub products to try and and I think they would have been better advised that maybe looking at um, talking about security, about your data not being shared. I mean, having some great tools in built like that and inscription and things like that. Uh, do you think it was just they've chosen the wrong things or do you think it's just that they're facing the Goliath of Chrome and it was just all the oxygen has been sucked out? Well, um, I got to say, Firefox is still my main browser, um, and it's been my main browser for a couple of years. I mean, I <clears throat> switched to Firefox from Chrome because Chrome was starting to lag so bad. Um, and, you know, people that, that I know in the web dev community, now they're, now they're saying like, hey, have you noticed like Chrome like getting slower? I mean, I remember when Chrome first came out, it was blazing fast. So I don't know what's going on there, but, you know, um, but the way that the stats are today is Chrome has the most uh, market share of any desktop browser, like by a large margin. Um, and even on mobile, they have a, a very high uh, percentage of the market. Um, 
I think what Firefox is really suffering from is they don't have a big corporation behind them that can supplement their product. Um, you know, Chrome has Google. You got money for days. Safari, you know, Apple has got money for days. Um, you know, Microsoft has money for forever. Um, and Firefox, I can't really name anything that's, you know, behind them. So uh, they also mentioned that, what was it? It was something like their pre-COVID um, work model wasn't going to work any longer. I mean, that's a little odd, but. Yeah, it was uh, odd. And I, yeah, I think I think you know, they had the endowment from Mozilla um, when Mozilla settled with Microsoft. And they also, they had, um, they got money from some um, large corporations um, about something in, if something's added to the toolbar, so I think they get so much from Google. If people choose Google in the search or something, I might be wrong that's here. A, yeah, but that's how Basel's, uh, that's the the a business model for Basel's. Yeah. They're getting um, paid by who will be the, the default uh, search bar. Yeah, but um, I think also they had a very bloated staff. You know, I, 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 think, I did actually... Um, it was a while ago, I looked at, you know, uh, at them for some reason, doing some general research, and they had a lot of people. They, they had over a thousand employees, and I, I, I just think for a small browser um, team, that was ridiculous, you know. Um, and also the kind of um, wages and conditions of these people, they're not exactly the cheapest people. So you can imagine what... That that kind of staffing level can really eat through a substantial endowment rather quickly, and they need they needed to prune down. But what shocked me is, you know, they made this statement and talk about trying to shoot yourself in the foot. <laughs> God Almighty! Um, well, I don't know. Oh, I, think I, I, I just don't want to see like a world where, you know, and, and people who've been on the web a long time. I mean, when I f first came in, I mean, I guess this, this part was disappearing where uh, there, there wasn't a lot of competition with browsers. And I think it was just like Internet Explorer and Netscape and Netscape became Firefox, you know, like later on. But, um, you know, really, is it the same product? It became no, Firefox just, later on. Yeah, yeah. It, really, oh, I didn't know that. It just yeah, but um, the I just all these browsers are starting to use Chromium as their engine. So I mean, by default, I mean it's it's going to be all the browsers are going to be very similar. Uh, I mean, I guess it's good for standards in a way, but I mean it's bad for competition. Yeah, so, it's it's, a, it's the thing that we've been facing. We've had a number of these conversations. So um, I want to get on to the next story, but I think it's going to be our last one. So which one should we look at? Shall we look, look at exploring the first block patterns or should we discuss Apple now, a two tree and company? Which one should we discuss, panel? Which one? I can't I don't hear care. I, Oh, I don't care about Apple. So look, we could talk about the other one. All right. <laughs> I mean, I mean, Apple is a lot of money. Okay, I mean, <laughs> they have more money than they know what to do with. True. Yeah, well, you know, nothing we're going to do about it, is it? That's a true comment. Um, probably why it's number six, which we normally never get to. Exploring the first block patterns to land in WordPress theme directory. So, what do you reckon about this one, then, John? Unmute. Oh, uh, you know, I I think it's good. I mean, this is kind of a. I mean, this is a little bit of a. a propaganda piece too um i was looking at the comment section and people are like not really jazzed uh about this article um or they're just not jazzed about the um uh 5.5 in general well i gotta uh, i gotta say yeah. in my own world apart from one major client that had a rebuild where they're using gutenberg all my clients and all the sites, I've become an animator shop. You know, all the new builds and 
thank you clients we've done a number of rebuilds recently i've been busy thank you so much it's much appreciated and it's from old clients so they must be happy with the service they got um is we've become an animator shop and all the clients we support i've they're using other kind of old page builders and they haven't updated or they're using the classic editor or we've installed animator and we've trained them so i i'm totally divorced from all this um and it's interesting on reflection how this is happening isn't it i think there's a you know there's other design houses where they use um beaver builder or they use oxygen or they use um some other page builders so they're totally divorced so it's going to be interesting to see if wordpress or not is going to be able to get people to leave their favorite page builders and revert back to gutenberg i don't know what do you reckon vito am i just ranting right. so there is um again there's like the two worlds of wordpress there is us the professionals that choose our tools and then there are uh, there is the mass market that just take what this is given and what is given is gutenberg so that is going to win in the long run when it comes to uh, usability on amount of websites you know because uh, uh, the point uh, or what WordPress is trying to do with this entire move is, uh, you know, is getting closer to the square spaces of the world uh, where you can actually build it on your own. And that's where, that's where they're trying to get this to. Professionally, it's not a good tool, you know, what can you do? It's, it's very new. It's not, a, it's, it, it's, not a, it's not there yet. Uh, but if I'm if I'm talking specifically well, about well, they're doing their beta testing literally in public, aren't they? Yes, true. Yes, that's, that's, that's what the they open, do. That's, that's open well, source. You know, they won't they won't admit that, but that's what they're attempting to that's do, true. isn't it? They're attempting to do their beta testing in public, aren't they? That's that's true. But I guess that's true for every new update. For example, now there is this uh, jQuery migrate that was removed. Uh, last last week from uh, from WordPress that affects a lot of plugins, a lot of things. We actually took uh, uh, steps beforehand, and now what happens is that we're the only ones that have the the scripts in our plugin, so it's duplicated because people are installing the the jQuery migrate uh, uh, plugin on their sites. So um, uh, yeah, it's it's all work in progress. It's always a work in progress, and that's the I think one of the exciting things about WordPress. Um, but that being said, uh, if going back to this article, one of the, the this article specifically is about the block patterns uh, that landed in the WordPress theme directory. So the idea, or one of the things that they're trying to do with uh, with Gutenberg, which other page builders have already successfully done, is that if you switch your theme, nothing will happen. And uh, but this is actually going full on against it because uh, you're putting all of the scripts, you're putting all of the functionality inside the theme. So if you're gonna change it, the whole thing is gonna break. Um, if you have images that you're using or fonts that came along with the theme, you know, uh, font awesome that came with the theme or whatever, it's just not gonna be there, even if, the, if you're gonna, even if you're using that Gutenberg that is there from the core. So um, I don't think it's a good idea to do it uh, as a theme. I think it's a, 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 the, the, it, what's happening now where there is like a base theme that is kind of bare bone, nothing is there. And then you add stuff to it, like with Gutenberg or with Elementor or Beaver Builder or whatever your tool of choice. I think that's the right way to approach this. Uh, but it seems like they're going against themselves with this, uh, with this step here. Uh, yeah, yeah, I thought it was bon I thought it was semi bonkers, but <laughs> you know, yeah, it's crazy. It, 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 yeah, what do you reckon, Stephen? I mean, this is like one of the first things that has been done with um, this new feature. And so, anytime somebody does something in the beginning, like it's always a little bit like weird and a little bit hacky, and it's like not well thought out. But like they're the first ones, so like kudos to them and way to keep pushing things forward. And kind of like we've talked about over and over in this show. I personally think that the block builder Gutenberg is going to be awesome someday. It's not there yet. And it's a new product. They have to um, include a lot of people. And as things are getting figured out, it's going to be painful and frustrating and lackluster. 
but you know, five years from now, I think it's going to be a really cool thing that uh, I would wouldn't be surprised if I would see most of our clients you know, that are hosting on our servers start moving towards Gutenberg. Very few people use it today, um, but as time goes on and things get better, like it's going to be hard to, for Elementor to compete with that. It's going to be hard for Divi, Beaver Builder, all of those guys to be the, to compete with Gutenberg. I have um, an interesting question. So is is there a why to this whole thing? Is there is there a published why this is all happening uh, in this eco in the ecosystem? Well, in what context, Vito? What, like why? Why are you looking for the that? reason why we exist, Vito? Or the reason? Yeah, that's that that uh, you know that's for Wikipedia to say. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> but I mean, like here in WordPress, like why why is this the first thing this is happening? Is there um, uh, um like a vision what what is the vision well i think you, you just to finish off you you've touched a very um interesting subject and that that's what Morton and some of the other people were pointing out at the last um us word um word camp you know um yeah. not the last one the pre the one before that you know when G gutenberg had been announced that that there didn't seem to be any formal roadmap and it just came from the mind of the imperial leader which, which is matt you know bless his heart um and, and in, in the state of the word that that matt gave i forget if it was i forget which one was when they're announcing gutenberg um it it seemed like the main point was that hey we're going to start losing market share to these page builders right and in user testing, one of the huge things that people were having frustrations with was like, how do you get an image to appear on the left and the text on the right? And the default editor, it's like insanely hard. And so everybody is building all of these one-off page builder systems and siloed into their own group. And so it seemed like the overall sentiment was we can have WordPress that gets divided up more and more and more by these page builders, or we can try to come up with a unifying system and that's where Gutenberg is born off of saying that like, hey, we need to have a unified way for people to build pages in a modern world. Since we've moved from just a blogging platform, we haven't addressed this issue yet. Um, and so that's what's driving it, I think. Um, yeah. And you could argue whether they're doing a good job of implementing it or not, but I think we could all agree that it's better than the classic editor if you were trying to build a website with WordPress out the gate. Right. Um on to our recommendations of the week. Mine is Ancanny Our Automator. Um, it, they got a free version and a paid version. Um, I had the founder of Ancanny Our on the WP Tonic interview show about a couple of months ago. Um, and um, they're big in the Learn Dash world as a third party plugin. But they developed and they came on the radar when somebody basically totally um, copied their website and their product um, with some changes and there was a big hoo-ha about that um, and then I've been playing around with Automator and I've got to say um, how it works with WP Fusion and one of the main things is last, like, last week we were discussing um, some of the restraints and problems of the WP Tonic back end especially if you're a plugin um um you got your plugin shop and developer um this has got one of the best ux designs ajax designs i've seen in a long while it's really really clean and really easy to use being that it's doing um it's doing um mixing different ifs and um actions Go and have a play with it. Um, so, Vito, have you got anything to recommend to the listeners and viewers? Oh, you're muted. There is, um, a, there is an interesting uh, informational product that was launched this week by uh, Lee Jackson, who has uh, Agency Transformation uh, Live. It's like an event, an agency trailblazer. And he created uh, like um, kind of a walkthrough of... Uh, of a customer uh, discovery process. And more than that, it's, uh, it's a great training on how to be confident and know why you are actually 
charging for discovery. Instead of doing proposals for months, uh, waiting for something to happen, it's actually getting paid for the time that you're investing into researching and building briefs. Uh, so definitely recommend it. Uh, check out Lee Jackson and his, uh, and, uh, his content. Oh, I think that's fantastic. Um, John, got anything you want to recommend to the listeners and viewers? Yeah, and this is a, um, it's a long form article on all about internal linking for SEO. It's a 33 minute read. This is by noted SEO, Kevin Indig. So if SEO is your jam, check this out. This is a, this is a, a piece that you might enjoy. All right, that's great. Stephen, got anything you want to recommend to the listeners and viewers? Yeah, uh, I'm going to recommend uh, Zipfish Affiliate. We just launched our affiliate program this week. Um, so if you're looking to get into a little bit of affiliate, uh, helping your clients speed up their WordPress site, we would love to help you out. Um, right now, the deal is we give a $50 bonus <laughs> per website and then 15% uh, lifetime recurring revenue on each site. Um, so check it out. Um, love to have you on board and part of the Zipfish team. That's great. And I haven't used Stephen's product and obviously I'm linked to Kinsta, but I've got no doubts that Kinsta, that Stephen's product and team is fantastic because I've got to know Stephen and he's a great guy. So if, you know, you look around at different hosting providers, I'm sure there's enough room for a boutique um, supplier like Stephen and for Kinsta. So um, I'm, I'm going to, we're going to end the show. So um, Vito, how can people find out more about you and what you're up to? Uh, check out wpfeedback.co. We just did amazing case studies this week showing how people are actually uh, managing to save 75% of every hour that they're spending working with clients uh, uh, just with our platform. Uh, yeah. Amazing uh, series uh, uh, to see some results and to learn how people are actually uh, leveraging this platform. That's great. Um, Stephen, how can people find out more about you? Uh, head over to zipfish.io. You can read about how we make WordPress faster by optimizing the code and servers. That's great. And John, um, how can people find out more about you and what you're up to? Two ways. Go to my website, LockdownSEO.com. Second way, go to my YouTube channel. Just search Lockdown SEO or John Lock SEO. I'm putting out videos every other day on SEO. Almost at a thousand subscribers. Come check it out. Yeah, and if you want to support the show, go over to the WP Tonic YouTube channel. We've got over almost 1,800 subscribers. It's been growing recently. Go over there. I put the interviews with bonus content and our roundtable shows. I put it there first. And just subscribe to the show. And it's got a lovely feature, YouTube. It tells you when a new show has been published and you get an uh, update pops up on your screen so that's really useful so like i say do the show a favor go to the youtube channel subscribe and there's over 500 interviews i think we're up to 520 videos of all sorts of people and reviews of products which i will be increasingly doing over the next four or five months when I sort out my professional camera rig and get it to the standard which I am looking for. Um, we'll see you next week with another great panel and another great show. We'll see you soon, folks. Bye. Peace.